Hey, what's going on YouTube? Marine X back at it again. And listen, this is the complete dummy's guide to carrying an EDC knife. Don't worry, I'll be the dummy in chief. So I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. I just want to talk about some different reasons for carrying an EDC knife, which ones you may want to consider carrying. The type is what we're going to focus on today. The why behind it. In the last video I talked about, you want to at least have a combination blade in your EDC arsenal. Now let's talk about how do you carry that EDC knife. Now, as of late, I've gotten recently really, really, really dedicated more and more to carrying a different variety of EDC knives, depending on what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to jump right into it and just talk about why the type of, that you may want to carry. Now, this is going to be focused on when you might want to carry this type of knife, how you may want to carry it, so forth and so on. So we're going to start here working the way from left to right. So these first two groupings here, we'll move all these, move the rest of these kind of out of the way. For, so the first two groupings of EDC knife that you might be used to quite often is going to be your knives with the thumb studs, the manual opening knives, right? So they don't have any spring assistance. It's all you opening these mugs, all that good stuff. So the first one we have here is a Buck 112. Now the Buck 112 Plus, it's an awesome, they, it comes in variety of handles, awesome EDC knife, American made, awesome company. We all, you know, have a Buck knife in our arsenal, at least I hope you do. So very simple knife. I love the fact that it's picking up the oils from my hand in this knife. And, it, you know, it just has its own unique features and something that's nice to look at. But there's pros and cons to carrying the first grouping of knives, which are your knives that are manual opening and they have a pocket clip. So first off, this buck knife, extremely, I'm talking about you definitely, this is almost a two handed opening type of knife because of the amount of pressure also, the liner lock is back here in the back, but it's, I mean, just a lot of pressure. You're not flicking this thing open to get this thing open. Now, once it's open, it's pretty secure. It's not, you don't really have to worry about this thing kind of coming down on top of your hand or anything like that. It is something that you got to consider when you're deciding to carry a knife that has a pocket clip. First of all, whenever you carry a knife that has a pocket clip, you scream the fact that you're carrying a knife. It's, it's connected to your pocket. Depending on the pocket clip, it could be hard to sometimes get that knife out. Now, if this is just going to be used to scare some Amazon boxes, then, you know, carrying a folding knife is not that big of a deal. But if you're going to want this for some type of self-defense, maybe this is the backup to your boomstick, right? Maybe you're, someone's too close to engage with a boomstick, so you want to engage with a knife. Well, trying to pull out a folding knife like this one when it's really hard to open is going to be difficult. So I would say just next right next to us it's it's brother here now this is a bench made mini adamas this thing has great action right so a lot easier to open this thing you could easily open this easy whip action open it over and over and over again I, I don't have any issues when it comes to actually opening this knife even with the ability to easily open a knife you still have to worry about the fact that you're going to be trying to pull this out of your pocket you're going to be fumbling around now once again if it's just for those amazon warriors right you're opening boxes you might have to cut some cordage you know stuff like that okay not a big deal but if you're going to be using this for self-defense in any type of way i would just kind of shy away from the traditional folding knives especially the ones that are complete manual opening hey listen if you're getting good content out of this video make sure you hit that like button down below it lets you two know they need to share this with others because this might be some information that they need sticking into the realm of manual opening similar to those now this one in my opinion is kind of it can be a step up or a step down depending on your preference this is the tactile knife bear wonderful absolutely wonderful looking knife this thing has bronze scales on it it has a magna cut dlc blade but it is a slip knife it's a two-hand opening knife you're not going to whip this thing open so in a defense mechanism probably don't want to go this way but with enough pressure it will simply close so there's not a liner lock that has anything on it where you need to release literally you putting pressure on the blade is what allows for it to close. But here's some pros about this thing. It does not have a pocket clip. So if you're trying to quickly get it out your pocket, unclip it from your pocket, and you're in some type of defense mechanism, it may be a benefit. That might be a benefit. It really depends on you. This is a very nice, glamorous, this is the type of knife I like to carry whenever I'm dressed up or whenever I'm wearing shorts that aren't very accommodating, clothes that aren't very accommodating to a pocket clip, basketball shorts, stuff like that. So I usually will 
carry this type of knife that has no pocket clip with me. So next we kind of go to the knives that have a little bit of a spring assist. So here we have a Kershaw Leak. Kershaw Leak. Now this one here, different style, kind of like the way the blade looks on this bad boy. Kershaw, not all their blades are made in America. You know, the first three that we looked at all American made with the Buck and the Benchmade and the Tactile Knife Company. We're coming in on the Kershaw. This one specifically is an American made. They do have a lot of Chinese made. Now this one, lovely patina already being developed on this thing. This is the copper handles on this bad boy. And it's a great, you know, great little light uh, knife. And it has a flipper, right? So you can flip it open, has an assist for you. And so you can quickly get this thing open. This has this knife has a good action on it. You can get a flipper knife that has horrible action. And when you flip it, it doesn't quite work as well as it should. It has a pocket clip on it. The pocket clip sometimes can be a booger trying to get this thing out of your pocket. I would kind of put this in the same rail. If you're going to be for the Amazon Warriors, the boxes like that. I give this a step above that when it comes to self-defense because it does have that spring assist has the flipper mechanism. Now, depending on your state laws and all that next stuff, a full automatic folding knife might be something that you might be interested in because it kind of carries the best of both worlds. Now, this is a Gerber fast attack. This is a full auto knife, literally has a safety right here. When it's red, you know it's hot. You just literally push this button and the blade comes out. This is the type of knife that you have to make sure is legal in your state, legal to carry. A lot of places it's not legal to have a fully assisted opening knife. It's way more reliable when it comes to a pinch. You pull it out your pocket, you turn off the safe, and you push the button and it's out. Now this one does have the partial serration, the Tanto style blade. I've had this thing for years. I got it when I was in the Marines. It does have the reversible pocket clip on the side. The pocket clip is very, very, it's not deep pocket clip at all. It's very hard to get on and off with the pocket clip, but this is a workhorse of a knife. You can use logs to bang on this thing. You can carry it in multiple places. It is a little bit longer, right? So, you know, this one's kissing up near the four inch mark for a blade. So you need to make sure it's legal within your state if you're gonna get a fully assisted blade. You know, you're kind of like, all right, well, Marine X, you're kind of poo-pooing on folding knives, which I'm not really poo-pooing on them. I'm just, they have a place. And in the world of EDC, if you're trying to defend yourself, if you're trying to defuse a situation, those may not be the first ones you go to. But then we kind of end up on this bench made dagger type knife. This is the sock P. A lot of people are used to this sock P type knife. Now, the thing about the Sock P blade, it's an awesome um, knife, but this thing really does serve one purpose, which is to poke holes, right? So yeah, you can absolutely open boxes with this thing and you can use this for fighting. You can grab it, you know, it has a more sure grip with this big hole in the bottom, depending on your, tala, your style of carry. When I was in the Marine Corps, we did teach Marine Corps martial arts and we taught knife fighting. First thing in knife fighting is you're gonna get cut. So Remembering that, you know, this is going to poke holes in people. Now, the thing about knife fighting is that whenever you're defending yourself with a knife and if someone else have a knife, the only way you're going to put someone down is if you create large cuts, right? People, especially on adrenaline, they can take pokes, but large cuts is how you put someone down. This knife is not really slated for that because of how you're supposed to carry it. So if you're using it in a poke method or whatever, you know, it's not necessarily going to be the monster for creating large cuts, but I would still kind of give it a leg up on any of the fixed blades knives. You can also carry this on the inside of your trousers, on your pants. You can carry this on your pocket, but you can carry this on the inside of your trousers. You can draw from your uh, weak side, draw this, and you can use this in a defensive stance. So, you know, if you're going to be going into a place that allows it, the blade is kind of long, you know, that might be something that you consider, especially if it's going to be something that you want to be able to have more of defensive posture. Now, I personally, if I'm going to be carrying a knife mostly for defense, I've been leaning more and more towards fixed blades knives. Now, this is the SE, the Kandiri, I always get this one wrong, but the SE Kandiri knife. Now, this knife itself, super small blade legal to carry in my state. Of course, they get bigger than this, but this is really good when it's time to hold in the hand, firmly put my thumb behind the knife near the jipping and use this to create large cuts. Super strong knife. I don't have to whip this thing out and un, un, uh, unfold it. I don't have to push a thumb stud. I don't have to push a button. There's no safe. 
once I pull this thing off my belt, I'm ready to rock. It's a lot more discreet carrying this knife as well. I've wrapped some paracord around the included sheath for this thing, and I can actually loop this right through my belt loop with the paracord on the back, or I can just carry this in my pocket and pull it out my pocket and, and pull the and fully deploy the knife. Now, something like this is preferred if it's going to be in a purely a purely defensive mechanism. This is definitely going to be something that's very useful in regards to being able to defend yourself. There are some people, especially here in Texas, that carry some monsters around with them when it comes to EDC. Now, this is the Benchmade Bushcrafter. This is a big knife to be carrying around on your person. But if it's legal where you are and you feel more comfortable carrying a knife in a big whopping sheath, then not only are you going to be able to defend yourself, but also freaking cut the dang on skin off a carcass from some roadkill that you hit. This might be the knife for you. Now, of course, this is a big whopping knife where the blade goes all the way through the actual handle and scales themselves plenty of places where if you want to wrap paracord through it or be able to mount this different ways you can of course is a big whopping lots of steel s30v steel on it and plenty of it just in case you were wondering if you're going to have enough to play plenty of places here to hit this thing with the log or anything like that comes with its own beautiful sheath here and you can put obviously put whatever you want to on the side. I just kind of have here a little ferro rod so I can strike it if I need to. And that also has a little button compass on the end of it. So comment down below, like how do you carry your EDC knife? Are you just kind of like an Amazon warrior? You're scaring boxes every day. Do you carry knives for defense? Do you kind of have a knife that does a little bit of everything? This is just kind of like a small display of what you may want to carry it's up to you but listen if you're not a part of the battalion make sure you hit that button below we really appreciate that and join the battalion and if this is your first time stopping by thank you for stopping by for everyone else we'll speak soon